Hey, what's going on out there, everybody? Uh, today's video is about testing wheel bearing greases, and I have a lot of greases to test. And I, the reason I'm doing this is because it's just, uh, there's so many greases to choose from when making a purchasing decision. And you know, you hear so much chatter out there on the internet like, oh, buy this grease, oh, buy that grease, our specs are the best. And uh, it, it can be very just overwhelming at times on uh, choosing a wheel bearing grease, you know? And, and if you really think about it, it's just something as simple as grease, you know? And uh, here you are spending hours and hours, uh, you know, trying to research the best brand. And then on top of that, hoping that uh, that brand uh, is gonna live up to its name. So uh, I have a bunch of greases here that uh, I've selected based off of recommendation, based off manufacturer recommendation, based off of specs. And we're just gonna put them through the test. And I'm gonna put them through three tests, uh, friction, heat, and water. And then after that, um, hopefully you guys can decide on which grease uh, works best for you out of the ones that I've chosen here. And, um, you know, I highly recommend that, you know, you do your own test on whichever grease that you feel like you want to buy. Uh, don't just, uh, you know, l be limited to just these greases that I have here. And uh, in no way that any of these brands reach out to me and sponsor me or any way. This is all an unbiased test. And uh, I'm doing this for you just to just to help you guys uh, out there make a better, easier purchasing decision. And also just to see uh, what these greases do under, you know, just extreme conditions. I think it's really cool. And so um, all these tests are just things that I, I've come up with, ideas that I've come up with in my head. They're not like certified tests or anything like that. Uh, they're just things that I thought would be really cool to try. And um, this is the way that I, you know, I'm kind of uh, showing that to, to you guys out there. So um, with all that said, let's get started and let's uh, see how these greases perform under these tests. All right, let's rock and roll. Okay, so here's all the greases that I researched and looked into and the Renolet uh, S2TX was the one that I liked the best. I just had the best specs. So what I'm going to do in this grease test is I'm going to take this washer right here uh, on the smooth side and I'm going to place a dab of grease on this metal uh, rod here and it's it's both metal and metal so it's not aluminum and metal or anything like that just to kind of keep the consistency the same and I'm just going to slide it back and forth uh, like this I'm just going to slide it back and forth and see which one feels the best. See which one has, uh, you know, I'm going to compare tack. I'm also going to compare uh, glide and just see which one feels the best. And um, before I get started, I'm going to take some sandpaper and I'm going to rub it over this uh, bar right here just to smoothen out this surface. But I'm not going to do anything too crazy because the best thing is to test it under extreme conditions because when you do get your bearings they're going to be super polished super smooth and this will let you know which grease works the best on a bad surface so let's get started just going to take some sandpaper here okay so that should be enough I'll just take a wet towel here and wipe that down. We're going to start with this uh, grease right here, and it is the it's hard to it's hard to see, but it's the Lamb Components Ultra Low Friction Grease Synthetic Wheel and Bearing Grease. So we're going to use this and this um, they claim is uh, homemade or it's, uh, it's uh, their, own, their own recipe. So we're going to just put a little dab right there. I'll try to keep everything consistent maybe. Let's do a little bit more. Okay. And then this is the Renolit Replex 2. Um, this is one of Fuchs brands. OK. 
Okay. I always love it when you can just take grease right off of the top like that. It's almost like you're getting bonus grease. Okay, we'll put that back. Okay, and then this is Timpkin. Still need to open up this right here. Hmm, this one has an interesting smell to it. I'll just sit this back like that. And we have Mobile One, Synthetic Grease. So if you're wondering why I have just a big log of grease like that, it's because I actually bought a, a mini grease gun and it didn't work too well, so I had to send it back. Next we have Super Lube, Synthetic Grease. And then we have the Febby. Okay, and then for the Renolent LX PEP2 and the S2TX, I went ahead and I just put them uh, in this big, huge container. So I'm going to get some out of this. And then here's the LX PEP2. So, which are these two right here. They're just out of that tube and I just put them into these containers because once again I don't like using grease guns and I like using containers better. So so this was the grease that I end up using uh, for the car. I haven't even touched this grease. Actually, I'll just use. So notice that this Febby grease is the same color, but it's different. So uh, this is Febby 
and this is going to be the LX PEP2. So on the far right is the LX PEP2. Might have added a little too much, so don't scream at me. I feel like it's gotten bigger and bigger, but I think they're pretty consistent. Um, let me know in the comments if if um, it, it's unbiased and I can do again. Okay, so now we're going to take our washer and we're just going to go over a few passes and uh, see how the grease performs. So this is going to be the lamb grease right here. And let's just see. So this grease is gliding pretty good. Um, it feels super smooth. Now, I'm trying to pull it. Oh, so it's pretty good, pretty tacky. Um, gonna, so now I'm gonna take a towel and wipe it off. Okay, moving on to Renolet Replex 2. And once again, this is on the shiny side, washer's clean. Oh wow, this is super tacky, super thick. This is thick stuff. I mean, I can barely slide it. I mean, I, it's, it's not that it's, it's bad, it's just that it's, it's so tacky that it's, it's just really created a nice seal. This stuff is great. Um, yeah. And it's glad, I mean, it, it just creates a nice barrier. Uh, oh yeah, this, this stuff, this stuff is really good right here. You can really feel that it's creating, it's filling in the gaps between the washer and the metal. So this Replex 2 is good stuff. Um, so far it's, it's in the lead, I would say. Okay, so now this is the, this is the Tempkin right here. This is gonna be the Tempkin. So we're gonna clean our Washer once again, washer's nice and clean. Going with the Tempkin. Tempkin is really light. This is a really light. I'm already starting to feel the metal. Um, um, yeah, I already can start feeling the metal right right now on this Tempkin. And, and um, as you, the tackiness, it's, tackiness is good. I mean, it creates a seal, but I mean, it is just pretty thin in my opinion, but tackiness is good. So hopefully you guys don't mind. I'm just going to slide this down just a bit so that I don't get in the way of the camera. Okay. So it's nice and clean. Um, so this is the mobile one. So this here is mobile one right here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and here I can slide over here. Okay. Mobile one feels really good. I mean, it's, it's almost as good Mobile One is just as good as the Renolet Replex 2, in my opinion. Um, yeah, that it's it's thick, it's super tacky, uh, it's really good. So, and I'm not feeling any metal. It's creating a good barrier. Uh, nice glide, really nice glide here. Really nice glide. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is this is good. Mobile, the mobile one is really good. And you know, um, if you guys out there, everyone out there, you know, if you're skeptical of some grease, if you know, don't don't take my word for it. Um, you can set this up at home. It's really easy. You can go to the hardware store. You can buy some washers and a you know a little metal rod here, and, and um, you know just perform this test on your own and see which one you like best. Okay, so now I'm going to test. This one is going to be the Super Lube. So this is the Super Lube right here, and um, we're going to go ahead and test that out. So let's see how the Super Lube performs. Super loop feels really good, actually. Um, it's I can start to feel the metal, though. I can I can already start to feel the metal on on the super loop. So it's but the tack is okay, uh, but it, it does have a nice glide. Um, but I can start to feel the. The metal, it's, it's, it's getting a little bit better now that I worked it in, but um, yeah, this, this, is, this is definitely some good stuff right here. This is good, but um, the kind of wore a little thin, the tack, but um, yeah, everything, everything is good on the Super Lube. And also, you can see that it's, it's compliant. It's NLGI. GCLB grade two. So it is, um, uh, according to spec, it is good for automotive use for wheel bearings. Okay, nice and clean again. Okay, so now this is the Febby. This green one right here is the Febby, and we're going to test that one right now. So I'm just going to slide this over a little bit. Okay. And this is pretty thick. This is pretty thick. It's got some nice tack to it. It's created a good seal. Cannot pull this up yet. Ah, I can't even... Wow, that was super strong right there. Um, that's some good stuff. So the tack is really good on this. Creates a good seal, good barrier. And um, yeah, it's gliding. It's gliding really smooth. Really smooth. Um, yeah, this is, this, is, this is good. The Febby is good. All right, nice and clean. Okay, so this blue is this one. I actually should switch this around here. There we go. Okay, so the S2TX is this blue one right here. So this is the blue one, and let's see if I can, as you can see, the grease is blue. So that's the S2TX, and this is the one that I, I chose. This is the one that's currently in my car right now. So let's go ahead and see how it performs. Wow, this is, this is really this is really thick. Um, not as tacky. This is semi-synthetic. Not as tacky as some of the other greases. And I can start to feel the metal already. So, but it's very thick. It's, it's, I mean, it's, the washer almost doesn't want to move anywhere. So this is, I try to okay there we go so that one that one was okay actually compared to compared to some of the other ones um, this one was was all right so 
pretty surprised because according to the specs, this one uh, was supposed to be the best. Um, but we still got some more testing to go, so hopefully it can make up ground in other areas. But in terms of friction and glide, it was the strongest, I would say, or it was pretty strong. But um, it, it, you could start to feel the metal uh, pretty quick compared to some of the other ones. Okay, so this one is the LX Pep 2. So that's this grease. And it's not to be confused with the Febby. It's not the Febby, it's LX Pep 2 by folks. Okay, so. And uh, this is a pretty big amount here, so I won't run it as long. But let's see. Let's see if there's. Let's see if there's a difference here. Oof. Okay. And this one's pretty thick too. This one is similar to the S two T. Ah, oh, this one. This one has really good tack right here, so that's good. Um, it's, it's thick, it's similar to the S2TX. I can already start to feel the metal though. Um, yeah, I can already start to feel the metal on this one as well. And um, you could argue that, you know, it's not as smooth on this end as it was on the other end, so some of the grease has got favored. But, oof. but um, this grease though, it does feel good. And now to kind of give a comparison of, of all the greases again. Um, so going back to this one, this one felt pretty thin, but it glided really well. And this one, I want to say this Replex 2 was, in my opinion, probably the best uh, in terms of glide. This one felt really good. Uh, the Temkin was pretty, it was okay, it was pretty thin. Uh, the Mobile 1 was really good as well. Um, that, that one was pretty thick. The Super Lube uh, got better as I worked it in. Uh, so Super Lube was pretty good. Uh, the Febby, that one, that one was really good as well. Um, the tack on it was amazing and um, the glide was good. Uh, the S2TX, uh, that one surprisingly uh, was okay compared to the specs on it. Um, and the LX Pep 2 was uh, pretty good as well, but I mean the overall winner if I had to uh, just pick one I would go with This 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 stuff was uh, pretty awesome Although I will say it's hard to find um, So I'll give you a I'll, I'll really kind of Give you a look and then I'll put it in the description below for sure uh, If you cannot if you cannot find this uh, in the States then my next best my next choice would be to go with this. This this felt really good as well. And um, but if you're super set on you know Mercedes spec, then you can't go wrong with the Febby as well. And then um, these two, they are pretty good contenders, I would say, uh, in terms of just you know sticking with uh, the European line uh, recommendation. And then. Um, you can also go with, with Super Lube. Uh, you can't go wrong with that. So, uh, and then Timken, Timken, it, Timken was, was, I don't know. Um, I kind of have mixed feelings about Timken. Um, I, I definitely will use it, but once again, um, this, this one right here is, is the best. This one is the best. Yeah. So we'll, Go ahead and sit this one out in front. Yeah. All right. Well, now we're going to go on to round two, which is going to be heat. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, set this up again, and then we're just going to slam it with heat. 
and see which one starts to degrade the fastest. All right, let's get started on that. All right, so this is part two of the grease test. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a dab of grease here and then we're going to take a torch and we're just gonna burn the back of this until this grease just melts or do whatever it does. Uh, pretty much just take it to failure. And then after that, we'll go ahead and test uh, the final heat output um, on this metal bar to see what temperature that it went to before failure. And then after that, we'll go ahead and repeat. And um, I'll try to uh, keep the distance apart so that um, we can give each grease a fair shot. And then uh, once we run out of space, then uh, I'll go ahead and cool this bar back down and start over. So before we start with anything like this, where there's flame and there's chemicals, always wear protection. So um, I wear glasses, but I'm still gonna put these on. And then after that, we can get started. So here we go. Okay, so now we got our safety gear on and we're gonna go ahead and start with lamb components. Uh, this is pretty much uh, this, the first screw. This is actually the same running order as when we were doing our friction test. And so we're just gonna take a dab of this, put it on this and burn it out and see what temperature we get before failure or after failure, I should say. So let's get started. Okay, starting temperature. It is 64 degrees Fahrenheit. The grease caught on fire, but it didn't fall, so we'll go ahead and measure that temperature. And we have a temperature of, it's jumping around a lot. I'm gonna say the maximum It's cooling down rapidly, but I saw a spike of 500 degrees Fahrenheit. So we can say that um, this grease lasted to about 500 degrees. And I'll go ahead and put a time up for you as well. So uh, moving on to the next one. And we can test this steel and see where we have another good one. Okay, a good spot right here is going to be the next spot. And so let's go ahead and test. Okay, so next is the Renolent Replex 2. Uh, this grease performed the best, in my opinion, on the friction test. So let's see how it does on the heat. Okay, so. Go ahead and test this out here. Getting a reading of 73 degrees Fahrenheit. As you can see, 
that fell off rather quickly. At around 190 degrees Fahrenheit, um, this grease pretty much slid right off. Uh, it didn't cook, uh, it didn't turn into like a carbon mess like this one. Uh, it just pretty much slid off and the grease still looks usable, but uh, aside from that, it didn't stick as well as the lamb components. Okay, so next we have the Temkin and we're gonna go ahead and test that out. Let's look for a good spot here. All right, right there's good. This one, 193, 193 for the Temkin. Okay, right in here is 70 degrees. Next up, we have Mobile One. So this is uh, another good, good grease. So let's see where uh, the temperature goes on this. This one, 381. So Mobile One and Lamb components so far are the highest in temperature and they also are the longest to stay on the metal, uh, which is very interesting. Okay, so next up is Super Lube and we're gonna go ahead and test this one out. All right, so right here is 70 degrees, 69 degrees. So this caught on fire at, this caught, Super Lube caught on fire at 311 degrees Fahrenheit. 
All right, so now we're going to test Febby and see how Febby does. Right here, 70 degrees. I measure 201, I believe, um, is where it peaked, and then it kind of stabilized around like 197. So uh, Febby did not catch on fire. It just slid off at around 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so now we have the Renolent LX Pep 2, which is by Fuchs, and it's this one right here. So this is also a green grease um, that looks exactly like Febby, but it is not Febby. It's by Fuchs, and it's the Renolet um, LX Pep 2. Yes. <laughs> I had to think about that one for a minute. Oh, whoops. Just to make sure that uh, everything is fair. Okay, this is right at 69 degrees. Peaked at 193, uh, so pretty much almost identical uh, performances from Febby and the Fuchs Renolet uh, LX Pep 2. So um, once again, kind of going back to uh, the two, comparing the two, they're very similar. Um, so you can't go wrong so far with those two uh, in terms of performance in the heat department. All right, so moving right along, this is gonna be the Fuchs Renolet S2TX, and this is gonna be the blue grease, which is in this container, and we're gonna go ahead and test it out and see how it performs. All right. 69 degrees right there, looks good. I'm also trying to add enough so that when it does get hot, it will fall on its own weight. And this came in at 233. 
So 233 for the S2TX. So the, S2, the S2TX uh, slid off uh, really fast at around um, 200 degrees. So that's just something to be aware of. And that concludes our temperature test. Now, moving on to water. And we're going to test a uh, washout and see which grease lasts the longest uh, under water. Uh, I mean, for is being blasted with water. So, all right, let's move on to the next test. All right, so now we're here for the third part of our test, which is the water test. And we're gonna start off with the lamb components. And we're pretty much gonna do the same thing we did with the other two tests. We're just gonna take a dab of grease, put on this flat piece of metal here, and I'm gonna run water on the greases until they fall off. And I'm gonna start at a certain distance and just keep moving in closer and closer and just really putting them to the extreme test. So now we have the folks uh, rental it um, Replex 2, which was the winner in the friction test. So now we're on to the water, and um, the results for this one is uh, pretty cool. So stick around for that. And then, um, yeah, moving on, uh, the, next, the next brand we have here is the Timken. And um, Timken is, you know, they're known for their wheel bearings and everything like that. So uh, now they have grease, and they're also known for their Timken load test, which is something that a lot of grease manufacturers go by. So the higher the Timken load, um, so in theory, you know, the more the more uh, it can handle uh, impact. So that's that's where you get the extreme pressure grease and everything like that. That just means that it has a higher uh, Timken load. Okay, on to Mobile One here. That's the Mobile One. And you can't really go wrong. Mobile One is a, you know, obviously it's a very popular household name. A lot of people know it out there. So, uh, you know, just uh, let's, let's just see how this one performs. And we should expect really good results from this Mobile One test here. So, and then um, moving on to our next grease, which is going to be the Super Lube. And the Super Lube is really cool. It's, it's, it's one of those greases that, it, you know, just after doing a lot of these tests, it just seems like it's just an all-arounder. Like, uh, it, it, can do, it can do everything. And it's also, uh, it's, it's, it's got a food grade um, uh, rating. So it is, you know, I guess you can put this stuff around in the kitchen. But I, I, I wouldn't. And um, so now we have the Febby. And this is pretty much, uh, you know, kind of the alternative to buying the Mercedes-Benz grease. And uh, one thing I do want to mention about the Super Lube, which was the one before it, the white one, is it is hard to see. So I will let, well, I will let you know when that does fall off. And, um, okay, so now we're going to be moving on to the Fox Renolet S2TX. And... This is the blue grease by Fuchs. So this is, so there's three Fuchs um, brands, or I should say uh, greases that are uh, in competition. So, um, but this is the blue one. This is a semi-synthetic grease. And um, this, this grease was very promising on paper. So that's one of the things I liked about it. And uh, so we're just gonna, let's just see how it performs with the water. And uh, in, in the, the results, the results should be pretty promising. And now we have the LX Pep 2 by Fuchs as well. And this one is very similar to Febby. So this, this one, you know, the color is the same and the consistency and everything like that is, is the same. And as you know, I don't like grease guns too much. So I put everything in uh, plastic bins. And um, all right, so once we get this going then we'll start with the water all right so getting uh, getting that all squared away here and remember you know this this test isn't isn't anything special um, don't take my word for these you know for, for the results that I get uh, 
do the, perform these tests at home and and they're very simple to do and you know you can even get creative and come up with other ways to test greases but you know um, that's that's my thing don't take my word don't take the manufacturer's word um, always perform your own test if you are skeptical about a certain grease all right so now we're running the water and uh, as you can see that's that's kind of where I've started and I'm just gonna keep moving in closer and closer from there so right now I'm trying to keep it pretty consistent pretty fair uh, trying to get you know uh, even coverage for all the greases and so right away we see the lamb components uh, you know that, that falls off first and all right now we're just gonna keep going keep blasting these greases with water here and uh, just letting them have it and just uh, you know seeing seeing how they uh, hold up here and uh, looks everything looks good so far so they're 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 holding their own weight here and just trying to keep everything consistent and um, yeah so so that's I mean these greases are you know this is like an extreme test here and as you can see the super lube uh, falls off second um, but you know in, in in a real world environment your grease will be in a sealed hub or you know sealed to the best of it you know, best of its manufacturer ability I guess you could say so th you know this is very extreme um, you you wouldn't be exposed to this much water so it's good to kind of just see what these greases can do with this much water um, but you know this is this is this is very extreme in my opinion so now I'm moving in closer as you can see I really got the jet streams going and the Timken comes off third in this test so um, we're just, we're just going to keep blasting and so now we have the mobile one so mobile one came off uh, pretty much right after Timken and but a surprising note about mobile one is that um, when I was cleaning when I was cleaning up the grease um, off the ground mobile one didn't smear it was almost like it it rolled up into like a like dough it was it was pretty interesting and uh, all right so now we're really close and that reflex too I'm just trying to blast it out and it's holding on I mean it's holding on strong so reflex 2 is you know it's it's amazing and so pretty much this was this this was the running order um, you know I couldn't get any more grease to come off and as you can see the reflex 2 came in first place followed by LX pep 2 in second and then the s2 TX in third and um, I know you know it's kind of hard to see from that angle but I will show a close-up and then you guys can take a closer look at that and see for yourself um, how everything performed but um, right there I think I'm just kind of making a note that some more grease came off and that the LX uh, PEP 2 or I'm sorry the Replex 2 is just pretty much solid uh, all the way across and there you can see the s2 tx and the lx pep 2 i'm just really trying to blast those out and, and they didn't fall off they never fell off even the febby they never fell off uh pretty much they just what they did is they just smeared um and and but they they held on which was really cool so as you can see um here's all the greases and what what they look like after being blasted with water um, from a far distance all the way up to s up close and uh, I didn't use high pressure but I want to say I use maybe medium pressure and there you can see that um, the the super lube is just wearing its cloak of in invisibility there so yeah the Replex 2 amazing stuff that has won two out of the three categories so I'm really really happy about that um, that's something that I, I'm definitely going to make a change to after probably about 10,000 miles uh, on these on these bearings. So here's here's the close-up look. Um, as you can see, Replex 2 is right there, followed by the Timken, and then that burn spot. Ignore that, and then the, another pink one is Mobile One. The invisible part is the Super Lube. Followed by Febby, followed by the Fuchs S2TX, and then the LX Pep2. 
All right, so with all that said, I hope you've enjoyed this video, this test, and I hope that it helps you in your purchasing decisions for your next wheel bearing grease. Until then, thanks for watching everybody. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.